Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on uh, biostatistics and uh, design of experiments. Uh, we will talk about uh, two more distributions, one is called the exponential distribution, the other one is called the hypergeometric uh, distribution. All these are very useful in biology as well. Yesterday we talked about uh, the uh, beta distribution, if you remember, okay. uh, beta distribution let me recollect again um, the probability density function um, f for x is given by this particular uh, formula. We have the gamma function of alpha plus beta, gamma function of alpha, gamma function of beta, x minus a divided by b minus a raised to the power alpha minus 1, b minus x divided by b minus a raised to the power beta minus 1. So, here we have uh, 4 uh, parameters a, b. So, your x will lie between a and b and alpha, beta are 2 uh, parameters which are always greater than 0. So, we can uh, always have a as 0 and b as 1. So, x may be lying between 0 and 1. So, that gives you a simplified version of the uh, beta probability density function. Okay. Of course, Excel also had a, has a beta dist um, function as you can see you know beta dist x, alpha, beta, a, b. These are the 4 parameters. So, it calculates and lets you know what is the probability density function. Uh, what do I say beta distribution is very important. We can get different types of uh, shapes of graphs um, using different values of alpha and beta. So, that is the main advantage especially if you are a um, you know, modeling and simulating simulation person uh, and if you want to generate different types of uh, graphs then uh, this particular function is very, very useful. As you can see we can get uh, exponentially rising, linearly rising, similarly linearly dropping, exponentially dropping and then uh, curves which gives you a maximum and minima. So, all these uh, we see in biology also. So, if one is interested in modeling in biological systems, bio modeling uh, bio transformations, modeling bio reactors, then a beta distribution is very useful. All I have to do is um, manipulate these alpha and beta values and you will get end up getting different types of functions. Okay. Now, um, let us look at uh, some more distributions. Uh, the one is called the exponential distribution. Actually, exponential distribution okay, it is uh, related to Poisson distribution. Okay. If you recollect Poisson distribution gives you events okay, like uh, there are uh, 3 road accidents uh, in the city um, in a period of 1 month. There are 10 uh, infant uh, mortality um, in the South India uh, over a period of 6 months. So, that sort of um, information it gives events number of events, but the exponential give distribution gives you the time between events. Okay. What is the time it will take for the next event to happen um, that sort of uh, times it gives. And another important thing is it has a key property of memory less. That means, the previous uh, uh, information and the new information are not correlated at all actually. Just because a previous information has happened or an event has happened that does not mean the succeeding event will be dependent on the previous uh, event. Okay. So, for example, uh, road accidents, there is no correlation that because a road accident did not happen yesterday or happened yesterday, uh, there will not be another road accident tomorrow uh, or the, so there is no correlation on the um, events. So, it is used to describe the time or distance until some events happen. Like I say, as I said, you know, uh, how long it will take um, for the next road accident to happen in the uh, metro city of uh, India, that sort of uh, information it can give. So, it is an useful and as you can see, it is related to Poisson distribution. So, the probability density function uh, comes up with a relation like this. You have lambda e power minus lambda x. If you remember in Poisson distribution, we had only one term lambda, right. So, exactly uh, this also has only one term lambda here and then x um, is the uh, probability density, fun density function for uh, x. x is greater than 0 uh, or equal to 0 okay, 
and um, generally the graphs look like this they will be falling down for different values of lambda. So, the mean for this function is 1 by lambda okay, and the variance is given by 1 by lambda square. So, the random variable x that equals distance between successive events of a Poisson process with the mean lambda greater than 1 is an exponential random variable okay, and the, this is the probability density function okay, for different uh, uh, values of x as you can see the graph gives you the probability density function. Okay, so, you can calculate the cumulative distribution also all you need to do is uh, um, it is uh, given by this particular relation 1 minus e minus lambda x okay, for uh, um, values of different values of x and it because it is cumulative it keeps building up as shown in this figure uh, whereas the probability density function sorry um, the probability density function keeps falling as a function of x. Okay. So, cumulative distribution function uh, is nothing but a um, integral of 0 to x naught for x less than or equal to x naught. So, 1 minus e power x naught by mu. Okay. So, I can um, integrate it and uh, do the substitutions and you can end up having this type of relationship okay. uh, that gives you the cumulative distribution function. Okay, so, what is the relation between exponential and Poisson? As I mentioned, Poisson is a discrete random variable that measures the number of occurrences of some event, whereas exponential gives exponential distribution gives you the length of the interval between occurrences, okay, how long it will take for a particular event to take place, whereas Poisson distribution tells you how many events, okay, that is why they are both uh, interrelated. So, exponential distribution is a continuous distribution and it has no a memory term attached to it. That means, uh, just because an event has happened that does not mean uh, a, that will have a bearing on the next event like the road accidents there are no bearing on that at all. Okay. So, for an exponential random variable x we have a p x less than t 1 plus t 2 x greater than t 1 is given by p x less than t 2. That means, there is no um, whether uh, you take uh, a time on January 1st or whether we take time on February 1st uh, the time for the next event to happen will be independent whether uh, I start uh, my starting point as January 1st or I start my starting point as February 1st. So, that is the lack of memory uh, um, which is characteristic of this exponential distribution. So, we will look at some examples um, before that uh, let me also Sorry, let me also talk about uh, um, the Excel. There is an Excel exponent dist which is given by x comma lambda comma cumulative. Lambda is the parameter value, x is the value of the function. Cumulative, if it is true, uh, it gives you a summation. Cumulative, if it is, if I give it as false, then it will return the probability density function at that particular point. Actually, okay. So. Um, let us look at one simple problem. So, um, it is an epi epidemic is happening. So, when there is an epidemic you will have uh, um, patients coming regularly to clinics. Uh, so, that could be modeled using an exponential distribution function. Their time of arrival could be modeled uh, using an exponential distribution function. So, a medical center uh, what it does is it estimated that an, on an average there are 10 patients visiting the center between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. Okay, in that 2 hours 10 patients come in. Okay. However, it has been more than 30 minutes since the last patient visited what is the probability for that. So, for 30 minutes nobody came. So, what is the probability of that? So, average time for each patient's arrival it is 2 hours because 10 a.m. to 12. So, 2 into 60 uh, because we are converting into minutes divided by 10. So, that gives you 12 minutes. So, average time for each patient to arrive is 12 minutes that is lambda. Now, uh, we want to look at uh, uh, time interval between patients visit follows an exponential distribution with a mean of 12 minutes right. So, so we can get 1 minus e power minus lambda x ok lambda is nothing but uh, 12 minutes ok and um, so we are converting that into hours ok then uh, take 0.5. So, that gives you 0 0.095. Okay. So, actually this should uh, read as 60, 12 by 60 because we are converting that into um, hours 
multiplying by uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is your x, 30 minutes. Um, so, this is equal to 0 0.095, okay. Um, so, we can do the same thing here using the Excel function, okay. So, Excel function is exponent dist, Excel function exponent dist x lambda comma cumulative either it could be true or it could be false. So, let us look at that expo Excel function. So, we go to the Excel, Excel function, uh, we say We will say exponent uh, dist, exponent dist, comma 0 0.5 that is 30 minutes, okay, 12 by 60 because uh, we are converting the 12 minutes into 60. So, the cumulative, okay, so we could uh, call it true or false here. We look at both cases, okay, 0 0.095. So, the probability for 30 minutes, um, okay probability for 30 minutes nobody came um, to the clinic uh, because of the illness is 0 0.095. Uh, we put a cumulative here because when we say thir for 30 minutes nobody came it could have been 1 minute, 2 minutes, 3 minutes, 4 minutes and so on actually. Okay? So, that is why we put it as true. Okay? So, the same thing is obtained from this equation also 1 minus z e raised to the power minus 12 by 60 where the 12 is converted into hours that is why we are dividing by 60 multiplied by 0 0.5. So, that gives you 0 0.095. So, we get the same answer using the excel command also. Okay. So, it is simple. Now, uh, uh, it lacks memory. So, that is most important property of exponential distribution. Okay, Let us look at another problem. Uh, X denotes the time between the deduction of a particle with the Geiger counter and then we can assume that x is an exponential distribution with lambda is equal to 1.5 minutes. The probability that we detect a particle within 30 seconds of starting the counter, okay. Um, so, the probability 30 seconds within that time is given by uh, 0.3, okay. So, that is the time it takes for that to come back. Uh, it takes about 0.3. So, we can use the excel function also um, to get the same answer. So, we can put in uh, exponent dist um, into x into lambda into cumulative to get the same answer also and so the probability is 0.3. Now, suppose we turn on the Geiger counter and wait for 3 minutes without detecting a particle. Okay, in this situation uh, we detect a particle within 30 seconds of starting the counter. So, that gives you 0 0.3, okay. Um, so, we can put in the same thing here using the Excel command also. Sorry. It is given as 30 seconds, so we need to convert that into minute that will be 0 0.5, okay. Then next one is 1.4 minutes, uh, comma, then we say true, okay. So, we get exponent dist, okay, 1 point. So, we get it as 0 0.69. So, when we do it as 1 minus uh, this uh, that will come to 0 0.30, okay. So, this is how you do it. So, uh, it is a probability of uh, 0 0.3 that we did not um, that we detected a particle within 30 seconds or within 0 0.5 minutes. Now, we turn on the Geiger counter and wait for 3 minutes. Okay, without detecting a particle. What is the probability that a particle is detected in the next 30 seconds? Okay? So, you see um, we wait for th 3 minutes and then we, we want to look at whether particles come within that 30 seconds or we start our Geiger counter 
and within 30 seconds we detect a particle ok. So, um, just because we have not seen a particle for 3 minutes do you think the probability will increase? No, according if we start doing these calculations we will see we will end up again with the same answer ok, we will end up again with the same answer uh, which means even after waiting for 3 minutes without detecting a particle the probability of a deduction in the next 30 seconds is the same as the probability of deduction in the 30 seconds immediately after starting the counter. So, whether I wait for 3 minutes and then look for a particle within 30 seconds or I start my Geiger counter and look for a particle within 30 seconds, um, you will get the same probability ok. Why? Because um, as I said exponential distribution is memoryless, so it does not consider that because it has not seen a particle for a very very long time that uh, the probability will um, increase ok. So, that is the beauty of this particular uh, distribution. Do you understand this problem? Um, so, initially uh, we start the Geiger counter and within 30 seconds we see a particle, um, so we will say the probability is say 0 0.3. Um, then we start the Geiger counter, but we wait for 3 minutes without detecting a particle and then what is the probability that we will detect a particle within that 30 seconds that is 3 minutes and between that 3 minutes and 3 minutes 30 seconds, we will come get the probability as the same and there would not be any difference at all because of the uh, characteristic of this exponential distribution ok. It is not that, that the probability will increase because we have not seen a particle for a long time ok. So, um, so the uh, probability of will not change because uh, unlike other distribution uh, because we have not seen uh, a event occurring the probability will not change at all in the exponential distribution ok. So, let us look at another example. The average uh, mammalian genome mutation rate is 2.2 into 10 power minus 9 per base pair per year ok ok this is taken from this reference. So, this rate is given what is the probability that the interval between successive mutations at a particular base pair is 80 years or less. We assume that as the human lifespan. Assuming a genome of 3 billion base pairs and independent mutation events, how many bases are expected to be mutated over this time span ok. So, we assume it as independent mutation and we will assume it as base pair ok, billion pair. So, this is the average mutation and we are given 80 years ok. So, we want to look at what is the probability that the interval between successive mutations or is about 8 years or less. So, what do we do? 1 minus uh, uh, e power lambda x ok, uh, x is your 80 years, uh, lambda is uh, 2.2 into 10 power 9 um, sorry 2.2 into 10 power uh, minus 9. So, when we multiply by 80 we will end up getting 1.76 10 power minus 7 ok. So, th the probability that a mutation will take place in 80 years or less um, is given by this uh, particular probability ok. So, we can use the same thing uh, using our um, Excel function also ok. So, we have the Excel function um, it is got um, expand dist x is equal to 80 years ok um, into 2.2 into 10 power raised to the power um, minus 9 into true you get 1.76 10 power minus 7 you understand. So, that is the probability uh, of a mutation taking place in 80 years or less ok. Now, if you assume 3 into 10 power 9 as basis ok, then we would expect that after 80 years there will be 528 bases that should have got mutated. Do you understand how to do this? We multiply 3 into 10 power 9 hmm, ok. So, we multiply 3 into 10 power 9 um, with 3 into 10 raised to the power 9 multiplied by this particular term that will give you 528. So, totally 528 bases would have been muted, mutated ok. 
So, of course, here we assume that the possibility of us uh, site getting mutated twice. So, we every time we assume that double mutation is extremely low. So, it is only single mutation. So, by assuming that we are able to um, get a probability of 1.76 into 10 power minus 7 and we assume there are about uh, uh, 3 into 10 power 9 bases there would have been 528 bases that would have got uh, mutated in the 80 years. So, you understand? So, this is an exponential distribution it tells you the time between events. So, it calculates the probability of uh, um, the time of for a particular time to ha uh, for an event to happen. It has got no memory just because we uh, look at uh, some uh, event in the month of January or we look at uh, some event in the month of February. Okay? Uh, the starting point does not matter the probability of that particular event occurring the time for the probability is going to be the same. Okay? So, so um, if you are looking at say accidents on the roads, so whether we look at it from January um, how long it will take for that accident to take place or when we look at February how long it will take, it will be the same. Okay? So, that is the uh, special characteristic of this exponential distribution and it is related to Poisson distribution um, in the sense that Poisson distribution tells you the number of events whereas, the exponential di distribution tells you uh, the time between two events. Um, so, this is also a very important uh, um, distribution to know especially in the area of biology as you can see um, it is quite useful. Okay, now, let us look at another uh, distribution okay, that is called the um, hypergeometric distribution. Okay, what is hypergeometric distribution? Uh, so, generally here in a hypergeometric the sample size is relatively large when compared to the population of a discrete distribution core okay, that is called hypergeometry. So, the sample size is quite large whereas, normally normal distribution we sample may be small population is very, very large. We take 10 students um, from uh, a university and measure their heights. Okay, so, the population is huge whereas, in a hypergeometric distribution uh, we um, the sample size is sort of considerable to the population size. Okay, so, it is not really um, very, very small that means, the population is not very, very, very large. So, the sample uh, and population are not uh, very far away then that sort of distribution is called the hypergeometric distribution. Okay. Okay, so, uh, it gives you a discrete random variable the set of all pos possible values uh, at most a finite or a countable infinite number of possible values. So, it gives you discrete distributions are constructed from discrete random variables actually. Okay. So, it gives you a set of all possible values that means a finite or a countable uh, infinite number. Normally, infinite number is not countable, uh, but here in this particular distribution uh, we call it infinite, but it is still countable. Okay. So, it is given by this relationship the probability um, okay, C s x C n minus s n minus x divided by C n and small n okay. now, where your uh, n is your sample size okay. um, s is the event supposed to have happened okay. um, n capital N is your population size small n is your sample size okay. uh, x is the number of successes in n trials when I take a sample size of small n um, then my x uh, is the number of successes whereas, in the population of capital N uh, capital S gives you the possible number of successes. Okay. Do you understand? For example, if you have uh, uh, 100 um, balls in a box out of that uh, 10 balls are black the capital S if I am picking up balls I want to pick up black balls capital S will be 10 and N could be 100. Okay. And when I take a sample of uh, say 5, uh, the small n will be 5 and if I get one black ball in that the success x will be 1. So, the, this calculates the probability. So, you understand that the um, capital N the population although we call it population has got a finite size unlike the normal distribution where population is very, very, very large. 
Okay, here the mean mu is given by S n by capital N, S is the possible number of successes, uh, n small n is the number of trials, uh, capital N is the population. So, n by n is some sort of a ratio. So, S that gives you the mu mean, okay, very logical to think about. Uh, variance and standard deviations are given like this, the variance is S that is capital S multiplied by n minus capital S multiplied by small n multiplied by n minus n divided by n square n minus 1. This is how the variance is given by. Okay? So, this is the mean, this is the variance. So, the hypergeometric distribution uh, is based on the uh, concept that the sample size is not very, very uh, small when compared to the population size or the population size is finite. It is not infinite unlike the other type of distribution. Okay. So, this is also very useful distribution we will come across uh, in many situations uh, in many problems even in biology and non-biological uh, uh, studies as well. Uh, we will look at uh, each one of them more in detail. Okay. So, um, this is the C S C X is nothing but um, S factorial divided by X factorial divided by S minus X factorial. Okay. So, this is the uh, symbol for that. So, S factorial in the numerator, denominator will have X factorial and S minus X factorial. So, if you look at uh, this, this will have N minus S factorial in the numerator, uh, small n minus X factorial in the denominator, then capital N mi minus S minus small n plus X factorial again in the denominator. That is how it is broken and this will show capital N in the numerator, denominator will have a, a small n factorial and also n minus n factorial also in the denominator. And that is how the terms look like in hypergeometric distribution. Okay, so, we can also look at uh, problems in hypergeometric distribution and as I said uh, it is very useful um, type of uh, analysis to carry out especially in biological systems also. Um, and this distribution is quite useful in that sense, where uh, you have a limited number of population and a sample you take from that limited number of population. Okay? Thank you very much. We will continue in the next class.